Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to go back to basic. Today's video is for beginner Premiere Pro editors and I'm gonna give you six tips on how to make your workflow more efficient. These tips will speed up your editing and thus allowing you to be more creative. I have worked with a lot of editors in the past and the main thing I see happening over and over, no matter how creative they are, if they can't work seamlessly in Premiere Pro, they spend lots of time trying to understand how to do something in the software and that leads to a break in the creative flow. You can't let the tool limit you in the creative process and the only way around that is to have more practice. Premiere Pro or whatever software you decide to edit in has to become an extension of your fingers and that takes time. With these six tips, hopefully I'll be able to help a few of you that are just starting out in Premiere Pro. The best way to spend less time looking for shots and more time editing is to be organized. It might be a bit boring, but it's a crazy time saving tip. Make sure to arrange your footage into folders straight after every shoot and name them accordingly. Make this a habit and eventually it will become second nature. It doesn't matter how small the job is, just do it. You might have to revisit the footage in six months time and you won't remember where things are. Or you could be handing the project to someone else to edit and if they have to spend valuable time looking for files or organizing the footage after the fact, that's time wasted that could be spent creating a great edit. So in this particular case, the project is called Alba Energy, for example. The project folder has to contain footage, a folder for graphics, a folder for music, a folder for VFX, sound effects, or whatever other assets. By labeling them, it's very easy to find files after the fact. In the footage folder, for example, you can then create subfolders to separate the footage from different sources. For this example, A camera is the Ursa, B camera is the Pocket, and C camera is the Mavic Pro. So if you follow those instructions, you should be able to keep your projects organized and you can store them and access them anytime in the future and you'll know where everything is in every folder. So now let's just create that example, but in Windows. There's actually another cool thing that once you organize your folders in Explorer in Windows, you can just drag and drop all the folders inside Premiere Pro and Premiere Pro will create the folder structure you created outside. Keeping all your assets in the same place, the folders keep the same name, so it makes it very easy to work and know where the files are once you're inside Premiere Pro. So in this case, I have my folder here with music, graphics, footage, inside footage. I have my drone shots. I have my pocket cinema camera footage. I have my screen recording for the tutorial in this case. And I have the Ursa Mini footage, which is this footage you're watching right now. So once you have your folder structure created, music, graphic, footage from the drone, from pocket, screen recordings, Ursa Mini footage, you're just going to drag all those folders and drop them inside Premiere Pro. I'm not going to do it again. I already have the footage here. So here's the footage from the pocket. Here's the footage from the Mavic. Here's the footage from the tutorial I'm recording right now. And that's it. You're good to go and you're organized and you have all your files where they should be. So if you follow that step, it's going to help you a lot and it's going to speed up your workflow. And it gives you the advantage of being organized. So if you do have to hand over the project to someone else, they'll know where everything is. If you have the need to look for this project up in a few months time, you'll know that everything is where it should be and it's clearly level. So that's going to save you time. This tip might not be something you have to do all the time and will depend greatly on what camera you're shooting, codecs and resolutions. Also your machine's ability to play back in real time. For example, if your camera shoots in ProRes and you're shooting at 1080p 422 color space, you might not need to do proxies at all because ProRes is a great codec to edit. In my particular case, my machine can handle up to 4K 422 without a problem, without dropping frames. So I don't actually create proxies when I'm shooting with the Ursa or the Pocket in those specs. In the other hand, if you're working with footage that's heavily compressed, like the footage that comes out of the Mavic 2 Pro, in my particular case, I was shooting 10 bit, 4K in H.265, which is a very heavily compressed codec. This footage requires a greater processing power and generally slows down my machine and the playback is choppy. The same happens when I'm shooting with the GoPro or the DJI Osmo Action. 
the footage is just so heavily compressed that I need to create proxies to be able to work with those files without having the delay in choppy playback that takes you away from actually creating content. So when shooting with those cameras I will always create proxies and it just makes my playback smoother and my editing faster. So once we're in Premiere, this is how we create proxies. I can actually select the whole folder where all my footage lives in if I want to create proxies for every single file inside it. I would go to my footage folder, proxy, create proxies. In my case, I'm not going to actually create proxies for all the files because that footage plays fine in my computer. I'm just going to create proxies for the DJI footage from the Mavic. So I'm going to right click here and then go to proxies, create proxies. In this case, the format is QuickTime and my codec is Apple ProRes proxy. This is a 720p resolution file. So it will be very light in my machine and I won't have any issues in real time playback. By default, the proxies will actually be created next to the original media. So I'll just hit OK. Once I hit OK, this will now launch media encoder and the rendering of the proxies will actually happen in the background so I could potentially continue working and the software will automatically create the proxies by itself. This is the proxy jobs happening in the background so you don't really have to wait until this is done depending on your computer. If it's a bit slower you might have to uh, wait for the jobs to be finished but if not you can continue working and whatever you were working before. Once Media Encoder has finished rendering the proxies all you need to go is to this tab and toggle proxies on and off. So by default it's off. If you press on, it will actually play back this file with the proxy file. So you turn it on and off. If you can't see the proxy sign here, you're going to go to the button editor. You're going to get it from here, drag and drop it into your layout. And that's it. So that was it. Very easy to follow. It's a tip that will save you loads of time in real time playback. So it will allow you to edit a bit faster. No? I'm recording. More coffee? No, I can't drink anymore. This one is a very easy one and it's going to save you a lot of time when you're creating a new sequence. Just set aside a selection of shots you're going to use in the new timeline and then drag and drop them into the new item section and you're good to go. Premiere Pro will create a new subsequence and even name it for you. All you need to do is change the name if you want to change the name. If not, continue working as normal. Okay, here in Premiere Pro, I have a timeline with a selection of shots that I've created from a trip we did. This is a sequence, it's called Pocket Select. Just to preserve this sequence for later use in case I need to go back to something. I know these shots probably are the ones I'm going to use. So I'm going to keep this selection as the shots that I think should be in my edit. So I'm going to click and hold, drag, select all the clips and I'm going to drag them to the new item. When I release the click, you can see here that I now have a new sequence called pocket select underscore sub 01. And that's it. So I can click that sequence. Now we're working under that sequence, preserving the original sequence, which is this one, just in case we need to go back in the future. So double click this one and I'm now working on the new sub sequence. You can make any changes you want or you could rename it if you want to rename it into something else. That's a very easy and simple trick and it will help you kind of work a bit faster and more organized with uh, sub selections. This simple step will allow you to know what type of footage you have in your timeline. When the projects you're working on become more complex, this will come in handy and will help you to navigate your timeline and know exactly what type of files you're looking at. Back in Premiere now, we're going to color code the footage from the Pocket and the Mavic. So at the moment, all the footage, whenever I drag it into my timeline, it change, no, change. whenever I drag it into my timeline, all the files right now are purple or violet. If you're working in a small project, this might be easy to do. But if the projects become more complex and you want to know where the shots from the A camera are or where the shots from the B camera are or where the aerial shots are without actually having to scrub the timeline, you can just color code them. And this will allow you to be, again, more organized and speed up your editing. So we're going to delete those clips. We're going to go 
double click, go to the folder, select all the footage and label. We're going to label the pocket uh, cinema camera footage to mango. So you can see that this little square now changed to like orange, like a yellowish color, which is mango color. So every time you drag a file from those clips into your timeline, they will be now mango color. We can now change the color of the Mavic footage to, let's say, brown, some color that we probably wouldn't really use. So it will be very easy for me to know what clips are from the pocket and what clips are from the drone. Adjustment layers are a time saver and they will allow you to edit multiple clips at the same time but you still have the freedom to edit individual clips if you need to. For example, if you need to change the exposure on some clips, you go to the clip level and make those changes. Once your timeline is correct, then you put an adjustment layer on top of all those clips and you're good to go. Okay, let's jump to Premiere. I have this sequence of shots that I want to grade. They all come from the same camera and I think the exposure jumps a little bit in this one and that one so we can make changes to those ones if needed so we're gonna go with this sequence selected we're gonna go and create new adjustment layer it's gonna have the resolution of the sequence I have selected so I don't really have to change anything here we're gonna drag and drop this into this so nothing has happened because we haven't actually added nothing. So we're going to go to the color tab now and we're going to look for a LUT. I have my LUT that I use for the pocket in this case, just to bring it to normal color space. So I'm applying this LUT to the adjustment layer. So this applies it to all the clips underneath the adjustment layer. So now you can see that, for example, in the first clip, I think the exposure is not correct. So instead of making that change into my adjustment layer and going and making changes here, I'm going to make my, that change here in the, at the clip level. So I'm going to select the clip I want to make an, a change to and I'm going to go to my color tab. Okay, let's bring down the exposure a little bit. Maybe put some contrast. I think the highlights are too high. So we're going to bring them down a little bit. I think that's looking a bit better. So before, after, and this adjustment layer is affecting this. So if I turn that adjustment layer off, this is the lock clip now with the correct exposure. This is with the adjustment layer. So we're going to do that to all the clips, fix the exposure in all the clips. So I'll probably speed up to this. So all my clips now have, uh, the correct exposure and with one load that brings uh, the pocket log footage to Rec 709. This tip is one of the hidden gems and it will change the way you see the assets in the Premiere Pro window. Both views have their advantages and disadvantages. For example, list view will allow you to see the clip's information like resolution, codec, duration, etc. In the other hand, icon view will allow you to see the clip's thumbnail making it easier for you to know what the clip is about. So we're gonna first begin with list view. Once you're in the folder selected, you can click list or icon view. First thing we're gonna do is click list view. So list view will allow you to see clip information like frame rate, resolution. You can actually arrange this to see what information uh, is relevant to you displayed in the order you want it to be displayed. So if I'm looking for a file that is in 1080p resolution and it's 60 frames a second, I can go with a list view and look for that specific clip. In the other hand, we have icon view. Icon view gives you thumbnails. This is the same folder. It's just displayed differently. So icon view will give you thumbnails and you can actually scrub to see what that clip is about. But you can still see the sequence resolution and the duration of the sequence. If you scroll, uh, go hover over the name and leave the mouse there, you can still see the information that you need to see. Say I'm in footage, I can see the resolution of the footage. And then if I go to icon view, I can see what each clip is about and I can hover if I put my mouse over them and I can see what the clip uh, has inside. 
And if I need to know what resolution this clip is, again, I will hover over the name and the resolution will come. The frame rate, resolution, and then the sound quality and the name of the clip will appear. So that's it for today. The video turned out to be a bit longer than I thought it would be. Uh, I hope some of you have learned a few techniques and how to improve your workflow and how to be a more efficient Premiere Pro editor. You can use these techniques to whatever software you use, if you use DaVinci Resolve or Avid. The main point of this uh, series is to be more organized from the get-go and this will save you time. And remember, you need to keep on practicing to become more efficient with the tool. The more you understand the tool and what it can do for you, the easier it will be to create better videos because the tool won't get in the way of your creative process. The tool would aid you to create those videos you want to create. So if the tool doesn't stop you and doesn't stop the creative process, then you're good to go. Remember, you need to keep on practicing to become more efficient at Premiere or whatever software you decide to use. And that's it. Go out, shoot, do more videos, edit more, you'll become better. It's inevitable. If you have any questions, please make a comment below and I'll get back to you guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next time.